I am Lisa Sol Cahill. I'm a professor of theology at Boston College, and I'm very honored to host this important conversation on Catholic peacebuilding in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I would also like to thank our many sponsors uh, who support us in this work uh, and whose support uh, makes it all possible. Um, so the context of this discussion is a long history of conflict and trouble in the DRC. And in fact, on Tuesday, June 30th, the DRC marked its 60th year of independence. Yet for many Congolese, the day came and went without celebration. Throughout its history, the DRC has suffered exploitation and violence with complex and varied causes. These include repressive governments, ethnic rivalries, rebel militia groups, corrupt governance, exploitative resource extraction, and conflicts with neighboring countries in the Great Lakes region. Amid the violence, though, the Catholic community has been a steadfast presence for peace, justice, and development. Its recent activities have included the Bishops' Conference monitoring the country's elections last year and mediating between the government and the political opposition in the conflicts in 2016-17. Catholic peace builders provide peace education and training and have developed one of the world's most extensive Catholic networks on extractives. Catholic ministries reach millions of displaced persons and other victims of conflict, yet intractable problems remain and new issues like COVID-19 continue to emerge. Just last week on the 60th anniversary of independence, Cardinal Ambongo of Kinshasa condemned the way corrupt government has dashed the hopes of the poor and encouraged ongoing violence. He especially targeted two bills before parliament that would increase control over the National Election Commission and the judiciary. He called on all Christian churches to unite and to be prepared to march in the streets should the bills be passed. This is certainly a courageous and activist church. We are grateful today to have four distinguished guests join participants from around the world to help us understand the work of the Roman Catholic Church as a peace builder in the DRC. To distill what can be learned for the DRC going forward, and just as importantly, to draw some lessons for other regions in Sub-Saharan Africa. First then, we're joined by Father Rigobert Minani, who is a Jesuit priest and director of Jesuit social ministry for the DRC and Angola. He is also the head of research for peace, human rights, democracy, and good governance of the Center for the Study of Social Action in Kinshasa. Welcome, Father Minani. Thank you, Lisa. Second, we have Dr. Leokadi Lushombo, a recent uh, PhD from Boston College, and she too is originally from the DRC. She is a missionary consecrated in the Theresian Association and will be an adjunct instructor in theological ethics at Boston College in the fall. Her research has focused on rape as a weapon of war in the Eastern DRC and women's political rights in the DRC. Thank you for joining us, Leo. Next is Mr. John Katunga. John is currently the Africa Technical Advisor for Peacebuilding and Justice with Catholic Relief Services, stationed in Kinshasa. Before joining CRS, he worked as an Open Society Institute Africa Policy Scholar at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, DC, and as the Executive Director at the Nairobi Peace Initiative for Africa. Greetings, John. Thank you. Welcome. Finally, we have Dr. Mauro Garofalo. Mauro has worked with a community of Sant'Egidio in Rome since 2006. And since 2012, 
has served as Santagidio's Director of International Relations. He's also spent time as a Conflict Resolutions Unit Officer with Santagidio and has been involved with many of their grassroots initiatives in various countries since 1992. We look forward to talking with you as well, Mauro. Our format today will be discussion style. I have some questions for our panelists to start things off, but we want to have plenty of time for questions from our webinar attendees. If you, as a participant, would like to ask a question, please type it out in the Q&A section. Uh, and Eric Owens, whose picture I think is on all of your screens, who's with the International Studies Program at BC and Theology, will uh, help collect and organize the questions. Ideally, we have a lot of participation, and if we have too many questions, apologies in advance if we can't get to you, but we're going to try to allow as much participation as possible. So now I'm going to just go to each panelist and uh, give you one question uh, to think about or to share with us. And I'd just like to remind you to please keep your responses to three to five minutes, although I am sure that is far too little for you to cover all of the important uh, aspects. But we do want to continue a conversation here. And as I mentioned, to leave some time for discussion with other participants. So my first question will be for Father Minani. So Cardinal Ambongo's recent letter was very strong. Has it been at all controversial? And what perspective do you yourself bring from working with the bishops during the 2016-17 mediations and also in the 2019 election monitoring? Going forward, what further challenges do you see for the church uh, in its efforts to live its peace-building mission now? So please share with us your perspective, Father Minani. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, first of all, let me precise that it was not truly a letter. It was a homily. Mm. It's a, it was a homily during uh, the uh, 60th anniversary of uh, independence. Uh, and the style was a very uh, free style, like a homily. So uh, it's good to, to, to notice that because uh, I saw people trying to go back and try to see how it was written. Um, what is the background of this? The background of this is the fact that, uh, in fact, today, uh, DRC, it is in very, very bad shape um, because um, uh, people are getting poor and poor and COVID didn't help. Uh, conflicts going on almost all in all the corners. We have conflict in Beni, we have conflict in Ituri, we have conflict in Uvira and Itombwe. Uh, the, for the first time, um, many borders have been invaded by countries from uh, neighbors countries. So we have Rwanda and Uganda. This is something that is, is known. Uh, they've been crossing the border many times. But we have this time uh, Zambia that has crossed the border and is controlling one part of the territory now in the south. We have South Sudan that have entered in the north, have uh, coming even taking hostage from the Congolese population. We have people coming from uh, Central Republic who are getting inside the Congo. And then, um, and beside that, we have all the question of looting of natural resources and, uh, and the situation. Um, so reminding that during the, uh, the 60th anniversary, it was very important because uh, when uh, the, uh, the power changes in um, 2018, uh, the hope was that uh, we'll have a power that maybe will better manage uh, the, the, the country. Uh, it was called the coalition, what the, the, the coalition between the ruling party, the former ruling party, and one part of the opposition. And uh, um, the Catholic Church from uh, that time, we, we, we challenged very strongly that coalition because it was uh, uh, done in very uh, weird world. It was uh, uh, fraudless. Uh, the guy who was in power didn't win the election. It was very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and we tried to organize, to mediate even, uh, possibility of uh, finding another uh, setup, but people didn't accept including the US government that has put very strongly asking the church to accept this kind of setup. 
So after one year of uh, these people being in power, uh, people are truly helpless. And uh, in the, the homily of uh, Okana Ambongo, it was clear that these people are spending most of their time uh, fighting one another, uh, trying to neutralize one another. Uh, no one is working anymore. Uh, uh, so all the, the, the hope of the people on this uh, coalition has totally vanished. And so uh, uh, and, uh, for uh, the Colonel Ambongo, we can long, no longer continue like that because uh, uh, we are uh, uh, in um, danger of uh, uh, being in a situation where the country can truly collapse uh, and the country can be in very bad shape. So, this is, so you've, uh, you've uh, uh, speak about the two um, um, actions that, that the, the two elements that has pushed uh, Colonel Ambongo to, inter to, to, to speak very strongly, the question of the electoral commissions and the court of judiciary. And uh, uh, so this is, the, this is the situation. And uh, uh, just to give an example, today we have a march in Kinshasa, tomorrow we'll have another one, on 13 we'll have another one, 19 we'll have another one of different people. And what is funny that people from both sides are marching from their own interest. So you don't know who is truly mm. running the country, you don't, don't know who is in power, who is not in power. When people of the UDPS themselves are marching today, when they have a president as a president, it's very funny. When people of Kabila are marching, they're starting today, uh, it is very, very funny. So it's very confusing for the church. So what mm -hmm. is the challenge uh, um, for, uh, for uh, uh, the Catholic church today? It is to, 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 people are truly struggling to know how we'll come out of this situation. It's clear that the, uh, this coalition is not working. It's clear that uh, the, the interests from both sides uh, um, are not the same. Uh, and uh, uh, what they've presented to the world that it will be the success of the uh, Pacific transition doesn't seem to be real. So this is one, one of the elements. So this is the big challenge, I should say. All the discussion we are having, all the, the, the talk we are having, it is around how do we resolve this problem? This yeah. is a big challenge today. Yeah. So uh, what is the, uh, um, uh, another challenge today for, from, from peace building perspective, it is how do the church will be able to, uh, to be the one building peace when it's denouncing strongly? So this is one of the, uh, the, the challenges too. So mm -hmm. how they will manage to get confidence from bo both sides to come around the table and uh, negotiate again. This is one of the challenges. So yeah. this is the things I wanted to put on the table. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the Cardinal seemed as though he denounced both sides, so at least he's uh, being even handed. Um, but so that's a great note on which to turn to John Katunga, because uh, Father Minani has given us the big picture and shown how much confusion there is. And you have done a lot of work with person to person peace building. And um, we would like your perspective uh, as well. Like, what are some successes that you see that maybe offer opportunities for the future? And again, what are the biggest challenges from your perspective as you work more at the grassroots? Please share with us some of your thoughts. So John, I think you're, uh, there we go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to express my, my opinion about the work that we do with CRS, uh, with the church, in building and nurturing uh, peaceful and just societies. That is one of the goals of CRS, new strategy. CRS carries the commitment of the Catholic Bishop in the United States to assist the vulnerable and uh, the poor people overseas, uh, but also by responding to emergencies, to fighting poverty, and also diseases. And as I said, to nurture also peaceful and just societies. It is under that perspective of nurturing peaceful and just societies that I would like to dwell a little bit. And building to what uh, for the Minani have just put across, he brushed what is happening at the national level and to see the commitment of the Catholic, the Congolese Catholic Bishop to help the country to move forward. 
But I want to highlight here the work that does a bishop, some of the bishops, because it's a congruence of the work of the bishop that is reflected at the national level. And I would like to talk about the Bishop of Kole and the work that he's doing in Kole. Kole is, the Kole Dances is like really at the center of the Democratic Republic of the Congo in the province of Sankuru. They might be at the center of the Democratic Republic of Congo, but they are the periphery of the development in Congo. So there's a high level of poverty in that area. Malnutrition is rampant. And above all, violent conflict has really torn the communities that live there, different ethnic groups fighting each other to the level where it went through the structures of the church. And this diocese stayed for 10 years without a bishop because none of the bishop coming from either community will be accepted by others. And Vatican appointed a bishop from a different province. And that was like a gift to the community of Kole. He came with a very strong vision of uniting all the people around and helping them to overcome their differences, which were actually based on access to the very little opportunities that are there and the rich natural resources that exist. So access to power and control of natural resources are at the core of the balance among the various ethnic groups in those areas. They don't have many opportunities anyway. And so he, with the help of CRS, he did not know how to go about it by himself. He had a lot of good intention but he wanted some technicalities to help him craft a process that will help to bring back the communities together. And he ran the communities in various, in a series of meetings, kind of sustainable dialogue with the help of CNS and organized a big meeting that we call the Forum for Peace, where everyone participated, even those who don't share the Catholic faith and traditional leaders, even the administration, the local administration participated in the forum. And they came with one recommendation, unless the political leaders from our area who are in Kinshasa are involved, nothing will happen on the ground because they're the one pulling the string and making people fight on the ground. And with the help of CRS, two meetings were organized with this group the talent, the high-level group. And they came to the level where they were about signing the comprehensive accord to bring about peace in their own area. And that's when COVID-19 struck. Mm. And people could not meet anymore. And the, the whole process stalled. Now, with the imagination from the bishop and his strong vision to see these people through, he said, what can we do, CRS? And at this moment, I can tell you, all the stakeholders are now linked through WhatsApp. They are continuing the dialogue. We are planning probably to have a virtual meeting whereby now they will accept every clauses of the accord they have signed and sign it virtually. So that by the time COVID succeeds, people can move to the ground and talk to the communities. The good thing is to reach there, it's so difficult because there's no road. You need to use the, the, the waters. So you go with by boat and it takes two weeks. So by the time people reach there, we'll know if they have COVID or not. <laughs> so that is very helpful. And it's one of the challenges that they, they have. And the situation is still under that level where the bishop is still working to see these people coming with a more comprehensive agreement to bring about lasting peace to their people. Yeah. So I'll stop it there. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And it shows that sometimes you have to go to the local level, but much can be done there. So thank you very much. And um, I hope you can pick that up later as well. So the next person to whom I'd like to turn on some of these very same themes is Leo Lushombo. 
So Leo, from your perspective, what are the biggest challenges that your country faces, uh, including challenges or effects on women? Um, what are, where are the spaces where you think that the church can do more or where it's doing things that are positive and promising? So again, just share your own perspective on that. Leo, I can't hear you. I'm not sure if you have your um, microphone on. Uh -oh. No, you don't hear her? Leo, your microphone is not on. Uh, sorry, your microphone is off. Leo, your microphone. Your microphone is on. Oh, wait, maybe I can unmute it. Okay. Um, I cannot hear Leo. Others cannot as well? No. Okay, Mauro, I see that you cannot. Okay. Um, Leo, is your microphone muted on your screen? I don't see it. Okay, let's, um, let's turn to Mauro and then we'll come back to Leo. Okay, and we'll see if we can get that straightened out. So uh, Mauro, if you too would unmute yourself, thank you very much. So um, Santa Gidio has been active in the DRC and peace building uh, for many years. So tell us about some of the things that it has done and how you see opportunities and obstacles. Thank you, Professor Lisa. Um, I don't think that five minutes, as you already said, are enough. But it's for me, instead of giving a list of things done or meeting accomplished, it would be, I think, good to see, to say together how uh, sub and actors uh, such as Sant'Egidio in conflict resolution and Catholic, of course, uh, try to contribute. Because if you, if you read in our records, you don't see DRC Congo as, for example, Mozambique or Central African Republic or more recently South Sudan, because it's a different kind of engagement. Um, let's say that Sant'Egidio, and this is immediately, the, the story dates back to the, the end of the Mobutu regime, always provided a place of confidential or less confidential political reflection for those actors from DRC that wanted to. To, to, to discuss things and, or to solve problems. And um, outside the pressure, in a place that has no colonial memories for DRC, which is Rome, our central headquarters, and uh, let's say a space that could be used by actors, not only political actors, but also groups and uh, opposition, government, etc. I, um, I um, let's say, try to re re recall all the things we did, because some of them happened while I wasn't there at the time. And uh, I have the strong suspicion that Father Rico Berminani knows better than me what happened, because he was part of mm -hmm. some of these initiatives. Um, but for example, uh, already at the end of the Mobutu regime, Kengo Wadondo, a former prime minister under uh, Mobutu, tr came to Sant'Egidio uh, in order to find a way or a political brainstorm to rebuild the country after or b before the crisis. And then in the years uh, of the Kabila father years, but, but even later, uh, we remember the visit of Abdullah uh, Ndombazi, Yerodi Ndombazi, and also Kabila himself, father, came to Sant'Egidio. Uh, I must, I, of course, quote the name of uh, um, Father Zuppi, uh, Don Matteo, as the Congolese call him, was a uh, young priest from Sant'Egidio, he's currently Archbishop uh, of Bologna and Cardinal, who animated a lot of, this, of these meetings. So even though Sant'Egidio cannot contribute the way uh, it contributed in Mozambique or in South Sudan, still we kept all the channel open to discuss with the uh, relevant political actors, but also rebels, also opposants. And in this, time, and in, in this sense, uh, we never stopped to do so. 
few considerations on, on methodologies. And Tegidio try to play a role for peace and conflict resolution if, uh, it's, uh, uh, if for, we can foresee a positive role in it. Otherwise, uh, entering such a complicated scenario and a crowded uh, arena such as the peace process in Congo would be useless. And another point is that, as already Father Minani said, uh, church, Catholic Church, but also other churches are already playing a huge role in reconciliation, in, uh, in the reconciliation of Congolese societies and Congolese uh, uh, politics. So in this sense, sometimes we have to accept that our role is maybe to have a, a collateral meeting or give good suggestion at a certain point to a certain person. In this sense, it's more... Uh, uh, collateral than uh, uh, the role of a protagonist in a crowded arena. Um, this story has never stopped. Um, in January this year, President Chisekedi, a few, a few, few weeks after his election, came to visit Sant'Egidio and posed to Sant'Egidio a number of questions how and how we contribute, we could contribute to the national reconciliation process, and especially with a special focus on Kivu. Of course, we are thinking about that, but um, I would like to stress very briefly that the contribution of Sant'Egidio is not only in political dialogue, because uh, th th this is not a think tank from Rome that tried to intervene. Sant'Egidio is a Christian community and is living in Congo with Congolese members all over the country. So our contribution is also, for example, trying to, uh, to treat HIV for free in Kinshasa, or in uh, Uvira, or in uh, Goma, and is also fighting corruption. We still remember a member of Sant'Egidio that was killed, he was a, a custom agent, and he was killed for, uh, for opposing himself to, to corruption, but also uh, social cohesion. Our communities are agent, young people, adult people, trying to work every day to, uh, to rebuild this, um, this, um, this country, which is very dear to us. And of course, this is the last element I would like to, to, to raise, also working on neighboring countries. Someone said already this, I think Father Minani. But if you look at the map, uh, well, Sant'Egidio was active in the Arusha process, which was affecting so heavily Congo as well, uh, in, the, in uh, Central Africa Republic and in South Sudan, but even in the LRA uh, Uganda process, we were there and we know how uh, heavy were the consequences on, for the action on LRA on uh, DRC population. In this sense, it's a multi-level approach. Uh, we are always available to, to play a positive role if possible, if feasible. And of course, respecting those who are uh, carrying the heavy burden of reconciliation in the in the country and especially the, the churches and the Catholic Church among them. So this is it, more or less. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, that's very enlightening as well. And now we're going to turn back to Leo and see if uh, hopefully we can hear her. So Leo, I do not see your microphone icon, which means that it should be unmuted and you should be able to talk. So see if we can hear you. No, unfortunately, I still don't hear you. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, okay, I, I think that um, the thing to do is to proceed with some of the questions uh, or maybe just a little bit of exchange among the panel. We've used one half hour but we still have Leo. So uh, if she should come back later, I would like to save a bit of time for her. So I think on, on that line, um, maybe we'll turn to some of the questions. Uh, one of the ones that I see here is from uh, Robert Grelsema, who's with Catholic Relief Services. And he has a sort of pointed question to everything that has been said, I think. And he says, uh, given the scale and intensity of violent conflicts in the East, uh, Ituri, North and South Kivu, what does the church need to do specifically? Uh, should it form a special task force or commission to address these conflicts? 
to advocate internally and internationally and to lead efforts to bring justice and peace to these areas. The violence has been going on far too long and has been so devastating to Congolese living in the East. So I, I you know, in a way that goes back to Father Manani's opening statement where uh, Father Manani, you outlined all the problems that there are and then John showed us something that is going on in one uh, diocese in Kale, which has been very effective, but it's not at the national level. Um, so I guess this question from Robert Grelsema is, you know, what could there be done at the national level, um, do you think? You know, uh, so um, maybe I'll start with Father Manani, but anyone that would like to intervene on that, please do so. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Uh, I, I'm not sure that we have a, a response to that question. Uh, the church has been uh, involved uh, in peace building in most of these areas. Um, we uh, they've been trying their best. It's good to know that uh, uh, till today the diocese of Butembo has lost three priests and we never found them. Um, there is a big solidarity at the level of the bishop conference in Congo trying to help the bishop to adopt the issue. Um, but uh, I think the, uh, the 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 idea of having a, a tax force can be it's a good proposition. Uh, uh, I remember uh, my friend uh, Mauro from Rome uh, when uh, it was asked that uh, St. Egidio helped for peace building in the eastern part of the Congo. Uh, the question was, how do we start from where? Because there is no conflict in the eastern part of Congo that is not linked to neighbors countries. Mm -hmm. There is no situation going on there that is not linked to all the drivers of the conflict, material resources and other problems. So uh, it's true that we need, we need to better, better uh, um, study the case and uh, maybe address the issue. Today, the situation is very, very bad. We know uh, the question of ADF, let's say just to give ADF, it is so complex that uh, uh, even the UN itself uh, uh, um, could not address the issue. So it's not the church. The church should know or see also its own limits. But it's true. I think that I, I will keep for me the question of having a task force. I know that it was a plan to have a big meeting of the Bishop Conference in Congo on the Beni situation and understand that a bit what was the, the drivers. Uh, this is one something can be done. Uh, in uh, um, Ituri, it is almost the same. Uh, but no one can can claim to resolve the question of Ituri if it doesn't cross the border and go to go in the side of uh, of uh, Uganda, uh, where they get uh, uh, support and weapon and everything, and where gold is fueling that. In the south, in Uvira, if you go there, you'll find it is Rwanda and Burundi fighting in Congo territory and uh, hiring some Congolese militia. So uh, the church can do uh, something, but I think. The, it is very limited. And uh, I, I remember that uh, the, my discussion with Mauro was that maybe we have to have a kind of uh, 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 map where we design the problem and uh, then to advise the bishop from where to start. Right. I'll stop there. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, I invite uh, John Katungo and Mauro Garofalo also to comment on this. Um, if you have any further thoughts to share, maybe we'll go back to uh, John first. If you could just unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, I, I think everything has been said by Father Rikobert uh, because um, there are things that the church can handle and there are many other things that are beyond the capacity of the church alone. In any case, peace building cannot be achieved by a single actor. Uh, we need the, the, the commitment of so many multiple level actors and to, to, to overcome the, 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 the situation, particularly the situation of the Eastern DRC that is linked to yeah. strategic minerals, is linked to many layers of actors. Uh, there is a UN report that was done, uh, the mapping report, that attempted to identify 
the culprits behind the suffering of the Eastern DRC people. But that report never had any follow-up. It has been shut down even at the UN itself. So it becomes really, really a situation of desperation for, for the people. They are becoming hopeless and helpless that a solution can be really found. But as you say, a task force will come probably powerfully to bring that kind of dilemma to the international arena and the national arena and create a lot of consciousness about the, the, the plea of the people in the East. Yeah. So Mauro, I see you nodding your head. What thoughts no, do you have? I, I was nodding to John. Uh, I agree with you yeah. that uh, yeah. advocacy for the population is one of the key roles of the, of the church. I don't know if it's useful or not to form a commission or a task force. Uh, uh, this sounds strange, it's too UN language for uh, the church. Uh, but I think that the, the first duty of the church is to, is to stay as it is, close to the people, to the sufferings of the people, to defend as much as we can. Uh, furthermore, uh, I see many times, especially in Africa conflicts, uh, the tendency to overcharge church uh, and churches, and generally speaking, faith-based actors in the search for a, a political solution. This is not exactly what they are meant for in their everyday duty. And it is also exposing them to the danger of uh, uh, the political fight and even the, the armed fight. So protecting them, protecting them role and not exposing them is also a priority to me. So staying close to the people. That's okay. the only thing I wanted to add. Yeah. So. I, I have a couple of more questions here. One is something that's already come up and might deserve some more attention. And the other one is a bit provocative. It's addressed to Father Manani, but it could be really to anyone. And the topic that's already come up, this is from, uh, sorry, no, that is the, um, okay, this was Julie. Okay, sorry, I'm, yeah, Julie uh, Kabukanyi, and she raises the situation of the contribution of minerals to the violent history. Many of you have raised that as an entangled factor, everyone, I guess. Um, so one issue would be to just focus in on that a bit more. Like, can you lift that up? I know Leo, who uh, is not uh, speaking with us right now, but she's actually published articles on this as well. And it has a huge impact. Um, so that would be one thing to speak to. And then the more provocative question um, from Tusan Kafarhire Murhula uh, is, does the Catholic Church actually speak with one voice with regard to politics, as um, Cardinal Ambongo's homily seemed to be calling it to do? Uh, what do you actually have to say about divisions and conflicts, like when the bishops in Kasai undermine the democratic claims of the people and went on to organize a mass celebration that condoned uh, the elections? Now, you can obviously see that this individual comes from a certain point of view, but nevertheless, he's raising, I think, a question we uh, could all envision being important. Um, so uh, any of you, Father Minani, Mauro, or, or John Katunga, on either of those two questions? Let me respond to uh, to, to Toussaint. He's a, he's a, he's a confer of mine, so uh, I, can, okay. I, can take the, I can take the risk. Um, it's true that he knows very well uh, the challenges we, 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 we had uh, um, after, uh, during the time of, after the, 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 um, the elections and uh, the split, we, a kind of split, it's not really a split that we had with one part of the, um, of the Bishop Conference. But this is something that it is not uh, very, very bad because this helped the Bishop Conference that is 40, 47 uh, uh, people to find the kind of equilibrium and maybe even to, uh, to be more politically, I should say. Um, so uh, we, we, you've seen that uh, uh, after that, we managed to have uh, a, a statement of all the bishop conferences and that they've signed, recognizing what would be the way, way uh, to go. 
today there is a very big unity in the bishop conference in congo it's clear that uh, uh, this that's why i insisted at the beginning that it was a homily of Cardinal Cardinal Mbongo. It was not a letter of the Bishop Conference. Right. But later on, one week later, the, uh, the permanent commission, that meaning all the archbishops, uh, wrote a letter to confirm that almost that position. And uh, 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 today it is clear that everybody, everybody, every bishops from the uh, 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 Kananga region, because that the region, uh, um, all of them, they, are, they agree today that that coalition, it is not working. It is not because the B church is saying that the, 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 the stakeholders themselves, the FCC and the cash, they, they are blaming their own coalition. Uh, uh, I, 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 and uh, so it's, this is, this is, so the, the split among the bishop, it has been, it's something that is very good. My experience with the bishop is this, uh, even if sometimes you have some different, I can say tone of different bishops in one subject to another one, when there is a plenary and when they take time to address the issue, most of the time they reach uh, a kind of agreement. And this is a very good position. If I compare it to other bishop conferences in Africa, it is truly a, a breakthrough. Uh, I support the work of SECAM in Accra, and I follow many bishop conferences in Africa, I can say that for uh, the bishop in Congo, they've been very uh, tremendous on this. And so we should not be uh, 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 avoiding tensions or on, uh, between bishops, this is normal, uh, but people should learn how to, uh, to explain one another and to solve the situation. So it is not a, a, yeah. okay, thank you. a, a dramatic situation for me. It is a, 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 it's a, it's a, a, a way to, the way we work. Yeah, that's good. Very realistic. Um, no. So, Maro or John Katunga, do you have any uh, further thoughts on that or even to go into the mining issue? And I see Leo back, so I'm going to uh, turn to her in one second. I'm, but I'm sorry. Uh, there you go. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, oh, okay, we, yeah, yeah, that's great. Right. I will come back to you in I'm, just one moment okay. uh, and let you speak, but first, just to give Maro and John one bit of an opening. Well, if I may, if I may, the, the mining uh, issue is obvious uh, even before the independence. Uh, Congo, as DRC has shown, to have all resources needed by the rest of the world at all time. So it is so mixed, uh, the, the texture between uh, exploitation of the resources and armed conflict that it's even uh, naive for me to try to, to recall this, but it's of course an, a fundamental aspect. As for the church, just to again to say that I agree with uh, Father Rigobert, also saying that uh, the role of uh, the Episcopal Conference in Congo is not uh, comparable to any other Episcopal Conference in Africa, all over Africa, but even in the region, in terms of influence, in terms of political weight, also in terms of political culture. Uh, meaning that, um, of course, it's a, a human body, even if spiritual, and there are many different positions. But, uh, I mean, uh, it's not me who said that is the only state institution uh, b beside the state in, uh, in the nation. So, uh, I mean, it, it's a story on itself. It's a story on itself. Yeah. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, anything to put in? At this point? Uh, I think everything is said except that the church is a product of the society and it's logical that it has multiple views and perspective yeah. on a situation that is confronted by the people. However, what is particular for the Catholic Church in Congo, they have the body that they call Senko, which is where the bishop come together and reflect together and their voices of reasons always prevail. And so that the reason they have been able to give a direction to the rest of the, com the, the communities yeah. and the country. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, Leo has not yet had a chance to speak, but we're happy to see you with us again. And you have a voice, literally. Uh, so <laughs> let's turn to you and uh, hear your three to five minutes worth of initial. I'm so sorry. 
Thank you, yeah. Lisa. So I'm so sorry. I really don't know what happened. I, I just restart the computer. So yeah. I went yeah. into the audio setting and yeah. there that's so fine. We un it happens to all of us. Yeah. So uh, I just can't believe this is happening. I was saying to myself, can, can I just believe this is happening today? I've been using Zoom all week, yeah. every time. <laughs> Okay. Well, we, we value um, your words. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so you said about uh, maybe one, one thing I can add, it's only the issue, the challenge uh, concerning women. Yeah. And um, one, one of the challenges that I would like to, to remind is what already uh, Father Milani uh, raised up, all the, 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 the army group and uh, neighboring countries, um, entering in the country and that I think it seems to be that it's really overlooked in uh, peace uh, building processes most of the time and the accent seems to be put on ethnic conflict rather than you know all the neighboring countries entering since the Rwandan genocide so I just wanted to underline that that all the rape of women today that women uh, rape is used as a weapon of war, it didn't exist before, it's never existed. You know? It started with all the wars and the since the Rwandan genocide, you know, with all the military entering uh, the country uh, from, uh, from all the neighboring countries, right? So, and I just wanted to underline, as long as uh, peace keep, uh, keeping mission, are not really uh, uh, focusing on that aspect and look into that openly, you know, what is going on in the region and call on all the big men that, uh, this is an expression from uh, uh, mm -hmm. Katangole, the big men of, of the region of, of around, not, not only from the Congo, you know, who, who are perpetuating wars, you know, controlling and military groups, we will continue to suffer and especially women, right? So um, according to the United Nations, for instance, of uh, coordination of uh, uh, OCHA, in 2010, more than 5,000 women were raped between January and August in the province of South Kivu alone. So how do you explain that it's only in those provinces that you have, you know, Eastern Congo, where uh, neighboring Rwanda and with the FDLR, FDLR are those who are supposed to be the, the genocidaire that uh, the Rwanda uh, government continue to follow into, into the, 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 the Congo in the Eastern province. You know. So since then, so women are being used, so war, war is being uh, used uh, on women body. So, how do you explain that it's only on those, those area that you have such atrocities, you know? So we need to look into, into that aspect, right? So it's true that there are ethnic conflict, but the ethnic conflict in the Eastern Congo are not the main uh, source of conflict, are not the main source of um, using women bodies. Dr. Mukwege's hospital for report having treated more than 5,000 women who have been victim of, of extreme sexual violence, and that in nine, 2015 alone. You know. And even today, you know, the, the, the numbers continue to, to raise up. You know. So the involvement, so I, I, I need to, to insist on this, you know, the involvement of Rwanda, uh, Uganda, and the Congolese militia in military in rep in the Eastern Congo is also being reported by several uh, security council, but they are not really being uh, looked at as they should, you know, in peace process. So these council have also shown the link between the, the war mining, so that's I call the triad, war mining rep, you know, that, that, that link is not really looked at. So, all those challenges that are uh, literally about mining and by, about controlling the resources are the main source of war about controlling the military that came from Rwanda, the military that came from Uganda, the military, all that, that uh, you know, uh, confusion of military in the Eastern Congo, 
that are not only from the Congo, you know. So they need to be looked at. So we cannot have peace alone. I mean, Rwanda cannot have peace alone. DRC cannot have peace alone. Uganda alone. So they need to get together. You know, the peacekeeping mission need to 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 look into this aspect. So that that's uh, one aspect that I would, I would like to say. You know, and uh, and the message of the bishop that uh, Father Minani already raised up. It's a call to action, right? The, the same call to action that uh, uh, the, our Pope Paul the Six already uh, underlined. Pope Francis is underlining, but and we are so blessed to have the bishop who are who are ready, you know, to to die. I mean, he's not the first one taking this kind of stance. Uh, Cardinal Mosengo did the same thing. Uh, Cardinal uh, Bishop Muzira was killed just by because he was taking stance siding with the, the oppressed of the Congo. So we are really blessed to have those kind of bishop, but the bishop don't have the, the, the solution. The bishop don't have the answer, right? So, so we need, the, the Catholic, Catholic Church need to, to, to learn a little bit more how to organize the people so that they can have a voice, including women who are most of the, the victim in this, in this situation, right? So Leo, there's a question that has come from Nora Nonterra, um, and she says something that is uh, right on point to what you're saying. You know, are there any signs of hope for women's leadership or for change in the DRC? And I would just add on to that. Do you think the Catholic Church has any role? Are they making that priority strong enough? Uh, but also, as Nora says, is there some hope? You know, what is happening? That might be encouraging. I think I think there is some hope. There is some hope, and um, uh, we all know that women are, are are working very hard, you know. And uh, economically speaking, so women they go out and they work, and this is one of the strategy, actually, the strategy of war. So so using women uh, is one of the the aspect of uh, you know just killing the country at the same time because they are the main actor, you know, that uh, help to build up the economy of the country. And, and they continue doing so. And you have many women organization, you know, mm -hmm. and the uh, international organization working with women. You know. mm -hmm. But one, one aspect that I would say is the church, because the church is, uh, is the voice, is the strongest voice, as, as you can see uh, with uh, Car uh, Cardinal Ambongo, you know. The yeah. church is, we listen to the church, we listen to our bishop. So what, what we need as, as, as much more hope is organizing people, including women, and include women in even decision-making processes within the church itself, you know, because they are the main actor, economically speaking, and even uh, peace, as peacekeeping, women are there around working very hard, right? and going through all these abuses. So how do you, do you leave the, 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 the men oppressed out of, of the processes? You know? mm -hmm. so, so the church need to learn how to include women voices. Okay. I think that will be uh, helpful as well. Okay, so we have just about five minutes left and um, there are a couple of other questions or factors. So I'm going to quickly run through these and then give you each a chance just to address maybe one or two. Um, so one of them is, what about the poverty and starvation that's so prevalent from Kitseo, um, who also says, we can't talk about peace until we really resolve poverty. I guess also maybe that implies, are they interdependent and how? And then, um, Another question or actually mandate is that the church should better address political corruption. Um, and then uh, maybe again, more generally, you know, what are some signs of hope? So um, I will just go quickly around to each of you, if you could give a brief summary statement, addressing anything that you think is important, but perhaps keeping in mind some of the things that have not been a focus explicitly thus far. 
Um, so I will simply go in the order in which we began, or we're at least scheduled to begin. So I'll begin with uh, Father Rigobert Minani. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sign of hope. I've seen that my friend Jean Baptiste Tala, who is a friend of uh, of John Katunga, he wrote yes. asking what what are the signs of hope. Uh, um, I'm sorry I didn't say bye when I was leaving the US. I was uh, I was in Washington. I was struggling to come back to Congo, and I was so depressed. People didn't understand what was at stake because I could not uh, sustain being in Washington and see things where how they are going. So what I found here, it is truly, truly a sign of hope. This, because beside the, the, the speech of the Cardinal, uh, uh, there is hundreds and hundreds of uh, young people organizing themselves in what they call Mouvement Citoyen, who are trying truly to push the agenda of the change. And for me, this is a truly a sign of hope because this is the future. And these people are very courageous. These people are very uh, uh, decided. These people, they don't fear to be arrested. Uh, uh, and they, they are pushing very strongly. So for me, I, I think, uh, and that they are, they are uh, supporting the, the, the call of the church. So for me, this is the sign of hope. So we are, not, uh, we are not totally lost. And I think helping them to be more organized, it will be the future of the Congo. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, John Katunga. Yes, uh, I will join the same. I want to focus on the sign of hope. Uh, I remember once a bishop told us, if we look at the Congo and take a picture, a snapshot, you'll be desperate about the Congo. But if you take a movie from it, from where we come from and where we are, there's a lot of hope that we are having. We are in the third election. Third election cannot be perfect we cannot dream to see a perfect election on at the third legislature. I'm sure the, the fourth one will be better than the, the third one, and the fifth one will be better than the fourth, and we'll be moving forward. So there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of consciousness among the people about what they should do and the contribution they can bring. And I was highlighting the work of a bishop in college, that kind of strong vision and credibility is multiplying in Congo by 47, the success that we have. And that's a sign of hope. And we have at a leadership level, people are not sleeping, are not living the things the way they are, but they are working on it. Of course, slow pace, everyone should want to see it very, very quick and rapid kind of dramatic change. But that, we leave it at the mercy of God. God himself will tell us that by his, his grace, he can make it happen. But in a human way, we are going slowly, but surely in a positive direction. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Leo. Yeah, I, I agree that there, there are a lot, a lot of signs, sign, sign of hope. And uh, I, I will only bring women themselves, as I said. So they are, they are organized in, in women movement. And I will bring in the cases of uh, the, the consequences of the evil of rape, you know. Many children who, who were born from all these rapes are, are included, you know, in society. So they used to be called uh, interamwen, as to say, those uh, genocides from Rwanda who came in in the Congo. And uh, to, to today, you know, all the movement are including them, and they are working. So it's 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 an amazing uh, sign, even that the kingdom of God is it's at hand. Be, beside all, all the evil, right? So, and, and then uh, the, 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 the movement. Okay, so um, Leo is- The, the, the hope movement, yeah. supply, yeah? So, so people uh, getting into the road. And, and the hope is that the, the whole church you know, at, at the national and international level need to get together as well you know they're trying to get together because the, this is a, this is a very strong process that requires people to accept uh, it's very dangerous going to the into the road you can be killed you can be you know but people are there and 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 trying very hard so and that's why we really need to continue you know accompanying them and, and study and um, all the strategies that can be 
helpful. Yeah. Thank you. So, Mara, we turn finally to you. I also see signs of hope um, everywhere. Someone already said that there has been an election and a change of regime without a bloodshed. This is already a sign of hope that no one could predict some months ago. I see a country less isolated on an international uh, arena, uh, participating in all uh, meetings, while before it wasn't, it wasn't so. Uh, I see some signs of hope from the neighboring countries, what happened with the elections in Burundi and a possible new, uh, new course, new, new attitude, uh, regional attitude is, or is also a sign of hope, as uh, is a sign of hope, the coherence of the church within, within its mission. I also see a sign of hope in the, in the attention paid by the Pope to the Congolese situation. He received uh, Chisekedi, he's talking about Congo. Uh, we have to work like this uh, all together, I think. Thank you. So this concludes our time. I just want to uh, acknowledge that there are many insightful and difficult questions that have also been submitted. I think that you, the speakers, have touched on all of the important dimensions of the problems in the Congo. I'm grateful that you were able to share some hope. And maybe the most important thing that we have learned is not to give up hope, but continue trying to understand uh, not only the DRC, but other conflicts and human difficulties that we have the power to touch. Uh, thank you for your leadership, for your wisdom, and uh, on behalf of all the sponsors of this webinar, um, you have our very deepest gratitude. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you also to the participants. Um, and on that note, I will end the meeting.